Right, so now it's question and answers for this demo. Uh, so what questions do people have? Uh, one of them they've just originally asked was, why don't you use the colon equals for inferred types? Uh, the main reason is that it's just for consistent. The colon is acting more as a um, prettiness. It's similar in like languages like um, Rust where, and other languages that this is a like type separator and this look, hey, if you see a colon, you can expect a type now. And when you drop it, it's inferred. And this is the same when you're applying it to the default values. Um, it's consistent in the syntax that you're when you drop the type, if you just you get rid of the colon as well. But this is only in the prefix syntax, the Pascal, not in the JI. In the JI one, you would have that uh, because the type is inferred by just it being missing. Um, but that's just a little bit of consistency. Um, that's one of the things. Um, do you have type deduction based on arguments? No, not yet. Um, again, I only have explicit para polymorphism. I don't have implicit, is what I'm saying. Uh, I need <laughs> to implement that. Um, it's not technically new. Like, personally, the explicit version would solve most of my problems. Like, I could get away with not needing it. Um, because, again, it's very explicit, you know what you need, and very rarely do you need generic code. Like, very rare. Like, I want a sorting function here or there, maybe you want um, some sort of, again, something to do with, sometimes you just always do arrays or maps, but it, that's about it at the end of the day. I don't really need much. Um, so people are, someone's asking, isn't there a type of value? Well, yeah, there is a type of value. Um, type, there's a type of, I've, I've actually merged them all, so I got rid of the type ofs and the size ofs. It's just type of, size of, size, instead of size of val, it's just size of now. Uh, mainly because I just thought there's no real need to have them as separate concepts, just merge them. Like, it works. And because I have default values now, like, the one where it wasn't consistent was for offset of. So if you add offset, offset of value, it only took one parameter. And if you just had offset of, it took two parameters, the type and the actual um, field. So I've just merged them together. So because you can have default values, it can, it can figure it out. Like, okay, this is one or two. Oh, fine, whatever. Um, so people are saying, some people like uh, Mikkel is saying, oh, stay with the current syntax, even though he prefers the JI. Uh, he thinks I should just stick with the current one. Some people saying they like the JI one more. Like, <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm not really that bothered about either way. They're both pretty much just as good as one another. Like, they are pretty much on par with one another. But, I know this sounds silly. Because this is a new language, you kind of want to stand out from the rest. And the declaration syntax is different. It is like JI. It is different. This prefix syntax is like every other language. It's like, oh, you just copy another language. I know it sounds daft. And if you want to stand out... You've got to be a little bit different, only a little bit. Because the other syntax everywhere else is like the same, like all my normal statements, my expressions, like every other language. But the declarations are different. This is very explicit, like clearly you're saying, hey, there's a variable declaration going on. If you were doing JI, you're doing that. That's not that clear. So it's... Mm, um, so someone says, this, does type off return a type? So can you use it for implicit... Um, polymorphic things um, kind of yeah so type of at the moment is a bit rudimentary it doesn't actually work that great it really doesn't um, oops I don't know why it's not allowing me to uh, whatever I know why it's doing this sublime text not being funny but at the moment if you just do like type of int and if I was like if that's not right if you were doing Type of x equals in, and I was just going to do uh, compile assert. Like, that will work. And if I say it isn't, it's going to do a compiler assert and say compile time assertion. Yeah, that failed. But yeah, that only works. It doesn't really work. So the other one says, are you sharing template initializations? An insta instantiation, sorry. Um, yeah, if I think, I, I think if you know what I mean by that, it says if you, if there's already a procedure with that like type parameters it, yeah it'll reuse it it doesn't um keep it create no one for every instant in, in, instantiation and um, yeah it just creates an, um, 
it just uses the old ones if if if, if it can find one if not it'll just create a new one does the language support tagged union? Yes, that's how the um, type information system works. It's just called union. So these are weird. These aren't like other languages in the fact that they allow for common fields and their variants also have the common fields when you take it. Their variants are pretty much just structs, but they're different. The syntax is weird. It's it just is. It's not like any other language out there, to be honest with you. I don't, it's how I do unions in C. It's just with better syntax and a lot more type safety. So if I look at... I'm just going to show you the C code now. It's, it's going to be look weird as anything. So here's the entity stuff, which has all the different... Um, which has all the different uh, type of things. You've got like constants, variable, type names, procedures built in, the import name, like whatever. And then you've got... The enum type here, you've got the entity strings, you've got flags for it, and then whatever. So here's the actual entity, which is just a struct. It has the flag at the start, I'll just tell you which kind of um, variant it is. And then it's got these default common fields that are available to every single um, variation. And then have an anonymous union here, which is containing all the different structs. I have like constant, the variable, the type names, whatever. This is how I use it. It's, I, it works for me. It's not... I do need to clean some of this up. It's a bit dodgy, but... It works for me, and it's good enough. Like, this is what I want. This is how I use unions. I don't want, like, um, the ML-style unions and stuff where they go, like, int, um, you've got a float, you've got a, you've got a cat, you've got a, a helicopter, and you do it like that. And I'm like, that's not that useful for me. Like, it really isn't. Like, most of the time when I need a union like that... I want extra information accompanied, which every single like variant has. Um, it may not have that. Like again, many other languages don't do this. It's and if they do, they kind of like inherit from the base class, so everything has it, or they just copy it every time. I just even want to be able to access these things as well without even knowing what its type is. So it's. It's a weird way of doing it. It's not common, but I really, really like it. And it's one of the things I hear, like, oh, type union. I don't want to check what type it is. I just want to know what size and alignment is. If you know the type, like, runtime type information. Uh, do I use another case of union in here? I don't think so, actually. I don't use unions that often, but when I do, I really do like them. Um, okay, here's a raw union here, which is, like, similar to the C style. This has no tag in it at all. This is just like, hey, this is a thing, whatever. Um... And yeah, that's okay. So that seems to be it for that. Anything else? I use? Yes, the grouping vars. Yeah, they don't work yet, but I'm planning on getting them working. <laughs> I've got them. So, do you want to allow uh, some kind of markup for doc generation? Maybe references to other structs and procs. Yeah, maybe, but I want it to be as simple to write. I just want it to be a normal comment that you just put a, uh, on top of a declaration and it just re and it just passes it. Like if you refer to something else in that scope, then you could probably just write to it. You could probably write um, uh, this. You could, you could you could have a proc here and this does like, I say foo. Um, I should probably not, actually, you know what, I'm sure I should, shouldn't write it in the um, preload. Just probably write it in the demo. So if you did here, um, you could say proc <coughs> foo, um, but you could say foo, you just write it as normal code, you say foo um, does amazing, oops, amazing things uh, for the type, um, I don't know, uh, potato crisps, yeah, um, and you just probably do it like that or something, and I don't know. I haven't really thought about how the style is. Probably marked out. Some form of markdown is probably the best. But then when you go through the documentation, it says, oh, there's a reference to this thing. Oh, I could click on it. As long as it's within this scope, because otherwise it's going to be... A, you're going to have some other problems, like trying to search for things. You're going to have to probably type check the entire program and generate all the docs for it. It's like, I haven't even solved what I want for packages yet or like modules or something. So uh, it's a really weird, complicated problem. So Go does it quite well because how it handles packages. Um, like you can't have cyclic pa um, imports on packages technically. Technically, 
No, not real ones. No, not real ones I'm thinking of. Um, and a package is kind of like an entity. with A package is multiple files in a directory. And then it will just it will do it like that. So if you're only referring to things in that package, it's not really that difficult. But in this language, um, the file is the fundamental like building uh, scope rather than the package. So <laughs> it's not as simple to do. Um, I don't know. I, I, again, I'd love some help to like how how would you design this feature? I do want it like this. I do want just a comment above a procedure, just as simple as that. So it's easy to read in the code. But I don't know how what I don't know what how to make it a little bit specialised. I don't want the silliness when it comes to like Doxygen or something like that. You can go like this and you go, oh, we got this and then oh, whatever. Sorry, I'm just going really dodgy and like you have to do this. You say this parameter is, and then you do that and then oh god, I don't know. I think that's just silly. And especially with the three slashes, I know it's clear saying it's documentation, but it's like. I don't really want it. Why do you have to have a specialised one? Maybe, maybe it's better. But I don't know. I, I just don't know. <laughs> it's the best answer. I would love a discussion with people about this. It would help a lot. So, any other questions that I can see? Um, not any real serious ones. Um, I can stop this now. And, and, and it, oh, what's another one? On the other... Uh, no. On the other, on the other hand, sorry, yeah, um, ideas would tell you which parameter you're typing in the function. Yeah, so yeah, you'd probably don't need to do the app param stuff anymore. Yeah, and the other thing is that you could put the comments on the actual like parameters themselves. Like you don't need the extra stuff. You could actually say, okay, here's an int. Uh, let's just make it a little bit easier by doing that. Uh, y is a string. Uh, said is a boolean so you could actually go and go like this and go and say okay this does the length um, this does the name um, is it cool like y you could actually do that so there is no need to have extra documentation here you could have it right next to it and that would be documenting itself um, so, it, again, if you can do build this into the language itself, it's easier to be well, so standardized and also easier to manage. Because that, I wouldn't mind. I actually wouldn't mind if you actually said, just had a little short comment explaining what each of these things did, if the name itself isn't clear enough. Because I think that's already clearer. That is already better than any other language I've seen out there, personally. Like all the other the implementations, because it's not a core thing in the language. But I don't know. It's one of those like I, I'm going to have to sort of figure this out, and like probably go probably properly go into it. So, again, I've just been thinking it through. Documentation generation isn't really much of a big problem. It's just I wanted to kind of solve it anyway, but it's... I actually don't particularly like the generated documentation, um, but in many cases, unless you've got a massive library and you really need to do it, but in many cases, I just read the code, it's better, but okay. So someone's asking, I'm not sure if I understand your generics. Are the syntax for types and arguments the same? Uh, yes. So if you had add int... Like you add and add a function, you add a parameter, int, some variable, and then another type. Can they be mixed? I guess this will be make type deduction for arguments impossible. So the first thing is that yes, you can do it. You can just pass a type to it in a sense, in the sense that types are not they're not technically first class, but you can just use them. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think this through. Yeah, and um, yeah, 
Yeah, so I don't understand why you'd say type deduction would be for the argument is impossible. In this case, the syntax is not that difficult. Like, um, I'm just going to do the case that you've just written there. So let's just get rid of that. And in the case that you have just written, which would be proc add, and then you'd have, let's say, first parameter is A, and that would be a type. And then you have a value which could be, I don't know, little a, which would be the big A. And then you have a second parameter, which would be big B, which would be a type, and you're probably returning B. And maybe what you're going, um, this is just a guess, you could be doing that, yeah? So this type is as you, hey, you specify the first type, you pass the parameter, you second, by the second type and return it. So in the case that you've got, you could have um, var x is just going to be a double. There's no double, it's just an f, what well, I don't even mean, but yeah, so int 1, 2, 3, f64. That would work. Like, it's it's going to work. Um, so I could just comment all that out for now. And then font print line D. And you can see, look, it's 1, 2, 3. So it's clearly working and it's being converted. So this could be a very um, cheap... Man, that's a really, I don't, but I don't know. So you could, the better way of probably doing it is you could probably have a... Um, you could have some, like, find... I don't know. You could have a key type. So you could have the key and a value and they're both types and then you have the map so you can have m and this is a map with the key and value you return ball and you can just do something with it so but again this is very explicit i think 90 percent of the time you probably don't need explicit to be wanting the implicit stuff so where you determine the type from in the actual parameter and if a, a type is passed to that parameter, then it's, it's just going to throw an error. Um, I'm not sure on the syntax, because the keyword type is um, is a keyword in this the moment. I probably might just keep it as a keyword just for that particular case. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm still racking my brain trying to think what the best way of doing this is. But yeah, I, I personally just don't know. But it's fun. It's a fun thing to figure out. I don't... If hopefully that clears things up. This is actually weird. I, I, I don't... I don't know many other languages that do it as a, on a user level feature. Um, but I just wanted the ability to create new as a user level thing, um, as a concept, rather than relying on the compiler to have it built in. So if you wanted to do this, you can do it. And allowing that showed me in C, I allowed me to do that complicated thing with uh, the entity system, which I would see as actually very, very useful. You could have a lot of that in by just having a nice little procedure that passes the type every time. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, has anyone got any more questions? And otherwise, I'll be just ending this Q and A. Is that okay? Um, thank you for all for coming and listening. Anyway, it's been great. Oh yeah, sorry, it's just before I forgot. And um, there's a few other features I'm trying to implement, but I don't know what. I for the compiler is why well, I don't know why it's not working. It's one of those weird bugs. I've been trying to build the compiler in 32-bit mode on Windows, and it builds. It has code, but then crashes. Like I think there's some point. I don't know what's going wrong. It's just not working. <laughs> it's just one of those like it builds and it passes into LLVM, so the compiler works. But the I don't know. So I've just disabled it at the moment. Just one of those like mm -hmm. at the moment. I'm, but yeah. Oh, okay, I'm with you now. Um, I think I, I don't have type deduction yet. I'm just trying to explain that. D type deduction would work still. So uh, would just use kind of a JI-ish syntax. So you could have a sort function, right? And what you'd have is you'd have, this is the slice, and then you'd have something like $t. So you'd have the dollar mean determine what the type is, and then you'd do that. Yeah, so that would be the, the dollar sign would be the type. 
um, deduction part. So now when you use it, the T would be the type of the element you'd use everywhere. But at the moment, there is no um, deduction yet. So it, the way you're suggesting is if you had, um, again, that proc add thing. So if the first parameter was very specific, like clearly this is a type you're passing through. So then you could pass the lowercase a. The second one you're asking is what if it was detecting these, literally the, the type here? I can't remember what the dollar sign is on these keyboards. I'd hardly ever type it. Um, so what you're saying is you could do um, b of a plus b like that. And what you're wanting is that I don't see what the problem is. So it wouldn't be impossible to type. So when you're passing this through, you'd be having, um, I don't know, I'm just writing this. So you say add an int, and then the first parameter would be an int. The second parameter would be an um, a, a float or something like that. And it would figure it out for you. So that could be the case like that. So one of the things is you're saying the, to, again, again, this is explicit. This is not type deduction. I'm not deducing the type. I'm actually stating the type, if that makes any clear. So I'm being ex very explicit about this, not implicit. What you're suggesting is you're being, okay, we want to deduce the type. So we just do that. And then in this case, in this this would be the add. This would be add one. This would be add two. Just to be clear. Um, what you're doing here is you're going to be add two, which would be a one, two, three, and that would be one, two, three, oh. Yeah. So here you're deducing the type, deducing, and then here you've been explicit. So this is implicit. That's explicit. And again, they both have completely different advantages, they, and they both different have use cases. So I think this one would be very useful in many cases. Um, for like again, again, like what I've just said, but in many cases where already have like the C++ template styles, but this one would be useful if you're trying to create a new like concept with a certain type and like it requires you pass it, um, and like that. I don't, I understand why other languages have the segregated region, the template part, but I'm like, why? Why do I actually need that? One of the problems which I don't have at the moment is you may be asking this is how do I um say specify this type has to certain meet the certain requirements. At the moment I don't have that. That's mainly because I don't have the metaprogramming system. I just want it to be as simple as saying, okay, does this type meet the certain requirements? You pass it through the metaprogramming system. Um and that's one of the things I would like to do. But again, I don't have that ability at the moment. I just it'll just it'll be generally work and it'll just say here's this valid syntax wise, it does it work semantically. It doesn't check it on like a higher level semantics, like does it actually work behaviorally wise? Um you can solve that with like traits, but I'm not a big fan of traits. I think I think they are just a bit too complicated and a bit more too high level in my opinion for a language like this. Um I know Rust benefits from it a lot with traits. It's how it does a lot of its systems. It's how it does operator overloading, in fact. It does it all the way through traits. You have something like Go, which has implicit the interface, the interface stuff, which is like implicitly defines the behavior based on what the methods of that type are. Um, but I'm, I'm not that big fussed. It's high, that's a high level feature that's not really useful for something like a language like this. So, my last question is just, should I change the declaration syntax or not? I don't know. <laughs> it's not really like, I like them both, and I like them both as much. It's just, I don't know. I really don't know. If that makes any sense. I just don't know. <laughs> I know a lot of people like the real idea. I I I, I like the. <laughs> this is nice because it's clear. It's like clear that this is an actual declaration of something of an entity. While the JAI one is so terse, like that's so like, quick to type. But it's not that clear, and I know many people make the mistake. They might write, they might write a colon equals rather than an equals, and so it, it it's just how it feels at the end of the day. 
And I'm not trying to copy JI either. Like, we have similar goals, and we're already pretty much going in similar directions, like, already. Maybe we'll just convert... We may even just converge on the exact same language at the end of the day. I don't think so. Um, I think there's some things we're already different on already, like, especially when it comes to, like, how files are handled and namespaces. But we do have similar goals. But at the end of the day, he wants a better... Something to replace C++, and I want something to replace C. And I'm thinking, okay, what do I want from C, and how would I make C better? Um, I don't know. I, I can't, I'd love to speak, John, just about this. It's just like a high-level concept stuff. But at the end of the day, it's not really that much of a difference. Well, ev well thank you, everybody, for listening in on this um, compiler demo and the Q&A. This is... The Q&A has just been as long as the demo-ish. Only about a bit longer, shorter. So thank you for listening, and... Goodbye.